in hand, and we are here until 4 o'clock this afternoon on Fox Sports 910. Uh, Charlie Ragel joins us, presented by Crest Insurance Group. That is Crest Insurance Group offering personal business and specialty insurance solutions for clients across all markets. Just go to Crestons.com. Charlie, Happy New Year to you. Let us start first because you did it. You kept the Washington Huskies offense in check most of the game, despite the fact you lost at the end. Has the Michigan coaches called you and <laughs> talked to you about how your defense was able to do that? And did you get your consulting fee amped yeah, up a yes. little bit too, Charlie? <laughs> That's even more more important. And I take that in wings. You know, barbecue, parmesan, garlic. <laughs> That's my negotiating rate right there. First of all, afternoon and happy new year to you guys. Thank you. Um, yeah, I uh I'm excited for this one. I think it is going to be a uh, a fantastic matchup and uh I really think that um I really think that Washington has a chance to, to walk away with uh, from this thing a, a national champion, and uh, you know what what a fitting way, uh, ironically, right, uh, for the Pac-12 sure. to go out as it, you know, ends its final season as a conference uh, with a national champion. Yeah, Charlie, it's interesting because people talk about physicality and lack thereof, and they always point at the Pac-12 as. Well, can they handle the physicality of the Alabamas and the Michigans and this and that? Why is it such a bad rap against the teams in the Pac-12 when you looked at the USC's? You guys were very physical. Washington, Oregon, is that just one of those facades or old wives' tales? Yeah, what, what, it's what, East Coast bias. Where does that come from? You know, I think that's a, I think that's a, a great uh, point. And I, I think personally that that thing – uh, derived many years ago, because I do think if you go back, um, you know, some time ago, uh, you know, the Pac-12 was out in front of a lot of the other conferences in terms of throwing the football. Mm -hmm. And I think that that kind of evolved into, oh, they throw the ball out there. Uh, it's a softer brand of football, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, I think that, you know, in, in some facets, in terms of that being true, in terms of throwing the ball more, but there was still plenty of teams out here running the football mm -hmm. and um you know uh i have all the respect in the world for the sec um and you know and i think it is a tremendous conference um but i i think like anything um when you get a little hype behind it uh it, it goes uh beyond uh the brand so to speak sure and, you know uh i know we were a decent cow team in uh 20 what was it 2019 and we went into old miss you know and and, and, you know, ended up being a close game, but we, we physically put it on them pretty good. And I, I think that the upper echelon of teams in each league is certainly um, respectable. But I, I think when you look over the course of it, I think sometimes those, those misnomers get overblown. And I think that's what's happened uh, to the Pac-12 in terms of, you know, pass first, run second. And though I think sometimes it's true, I don't think obviously that that always holds up. You know, Charlie, when you, when you guys played this Washington team, and what a hell of a game you guys had. I thought it was probably you guys' best game with uh, one of those uh, top opponents in the nation. But what is it about the Huskies uh, that you like versus Michigan that maybe uh, a lot of folks or the late person watching games doesn't see or recognize? Well, and, and obviously, let me say this, you know, obviously being out here in the Pac-12 and growing up on the West Coast, Southwest, you know, uh, I, I certainly recognize that I have a little bit bias. Sure. And, uh, you know, have some guys on that staff uh, at UW that I'm pulling for. But, you know, when you, you, you take, you strip it all away and you look just at the football, right? Uh, I think that this game comes down to, I, I really believe that, that um, it, it's kind of the game within the game. And I, I think it held true really in first in the Texas speed up game. And I think, you know, statistically speaking, Michigan is one of the top defenses in the country. And I think it's going to come down to who can control the football and not turn it over. Can, can uh, Washington's offensive line, which they have one of the better offensive lines and they're extremely well coached by, uh, you know, a, you know, Phoenix native and Scott Huff who, who went to Horizon High School has done a heck of a job with those guys up front. And can they put that in it? And, you know, Texas was known for, for having a, a great uh, defensive line, and they did at times get pressure on him. But, 
his pocket presence was really, really good in that game against Texas. And I think that, you know, if they can do the same thing and not turn the ball over, I just think those receivers uh, for UW are going to be hard to cover. And I just think that um, that is going to be the game within the game. I think it's going to be Michigan's defensive front. Can they get pressure and force turnovers? If they can, I think it's too much for um, for those guys to ask them to hold up in coverage. And I, I think UW wins the game if uh, they can protect him. Uh, Michigan runs the ball extremely well, Charlie. Do you see that possibly being also a key to the game where they can control the clock and shorten the game a little bit just by taking control and using that brilliant running game? Well, and, and again, I agree with you. I, I think they are. Uh, um, they, they do uh, run the ball well. But, um, you know, I think that UW has faced teams, that, you know, that have ran the ball um, maybe not as well, but certainly good enough. And uh, I think in, in order to, to eat the clock and, and, and keep the ball out of UW's hands, you're going to have to commit to running the ball full time. And you're going to have to be pretty dominant at doing that. I didn't see that kind of domination uh, from Michigan in the Alabama game. And uh, I just don't know that they can do that, uh, you know, convincingly for 60 minutes. Assistant head coach of the Sun Devils at being going Charlie Regal, joining us here on the right Toyota guest line. Kalen DeBoer, um, talk about a turnaround, all the things he's done up there. What is it about his coaches and his staffs, Charlie? You know this this man in reference to what he's done up there at UW. There's been several guys that could not get Washington back to, to the prominence they were many years ago. What, what is it he's doing or he brought to this program to, to get them on the national scene again? Well, you know, I, I think that um, obviously um, timing and being at the right place um, at the right time um, is, is a piece of everything you do with success. And, you know, I've known Kalen for a long time when I was coaching high school here and and he was, was recruiting out here, you know, and, um, you know, shoot, I, I, you know, he was at Eastern Michigan. He came down when, when I was down south and, you know, got him in to see some practice. So I've developed a relationship with him uh, over the, you know, over the course of the last decade. Um, I think what he's done is he's really put together, you know, he came in there uh, to UW when they were, when they were down a little bit after one season. Um, but, you know, he still had some talent. I think what, they, what he did is bring in a very, very good staff, a lot of guys that had worked together. And they had a, a really sound plan. And I think that you've watched them over the last two years stick to who they are. Three. I think that's probably the biggest compliment that I would give them is they know who they are and they play to their strengths. And obviously, Pinnix has a lot to do with that. And I think, obviously, this time of year when you're playing for championships, Usually you have a pretty good quarterback, but I think they um, knew who they were uh, from the very beginning and have stuck with that. And even when teams and people tried to turn them off this year, saying, oh, poo-poo, you know, they almost got beat by ASU. They played a couple of their games tight. You know, they said, hey, we know how to win those tight games. Where last year, you know, they came here to Sun, Sun Devil Stadium and uh, got beat, you know, so... Um, I think they've, they've done a great job of coaching to their strengths, and I think that's why they're playing for a national championship uh, to, on Monday night. Charlie, take me to uh, your school, ASU, right now, and where are you guys as far as the portal is concerned? Uh, are you done with the portal, or when it opens up again, are you going to be diving back in? Can you divulge any information? Yeah, absolutely, um, so we are back in the office. Today was our first day back. Uh, had I known you guys were going to be at the Stimpy Marketplace, I'd have probably skipped and met you there. Um, <laughs> however, it would have been uh, great. <laughs> um, uh, you know what? We, we do have uh, some visitors coming in this weekend that, that have been in the portal. So it, it, the window, it has been a dead period, but it opens back up mm -hmm. uh, over these next few days up until Sunday. So we do have uh, um, a handful of uh, young men coming in here from the portal that we will host. Uh, this weekend and uh we put the finishing touches on these uh on these transfers and and get ready our our guys go back into uh starting school on monday the 8th i believe it's the 8th on monday and and start getting ready for winter conditioning and you know all the off-season work uh will start here in the next uh week to two weeks um 
And, uh, yeah, we're going to finish up this weekend with uh, one last uh, round of uh, recruits. It's always good, pal, when you take time with us. Uh, enjoy, and let's watch some football for that uh, championship game. Happy New Year, Coach. Happy New Year, Charlie. Appreciate you guys. Should be a great game, and as always, go Devils. There you go. Charlie Raggle. he's courtesy of Crest Insurance Group, insurance group that offers personal business and specialty insurance solutions for clients across all markets. Just go to Creston's.com. All right, Michigan got some NCAA, I guess, allegations and notices of 